Okay, I've got the drying unit out, or the output unit, whatever you want to call it. Um, nice sheet of asbestos on the top of it, that's pretty good. It's a very rigid sheet of asbestos, perfect for uh, a flame proof backing and other things. I'm definitely keeping that one. Pretty sure it's asbestos, it wouldn't be fiberglass because that would the resins would burn, but that just seems like really old school asbestos. Um, nice big thermal switch, still slightly warm. I'm guessing that's the heating element. Oh, no, heating element connections there. Maybe another thermo switch or something there. Either way, I'll pull these covers and things off and we'll have a look inside it. Well, there's the drying unit. Now, uh, that big centrifugal blower down there would force air through here. It all comes out through those holes, top and bottom and just blows hot air over the paper as it travels through and that's what this heat is about it's like a 1000 watt I think it is yeah 240 volts a bit hard to tell what the wattage is but it's I'd say it's about a thousand watts or so and tensioner and that conveyor there is just made up of little springs tied together Nice big thermal switch and a thermal fuse which is blown at one point and they've wedged the two pieces together. So yeah, pretty simple. Not going to keep much off this, just the chain and sprockets. The idlers are pretty much stuffed. Yeah. I'm going to try and pull this heater out too. That's about all. Okay, well this is the uh, paper transfer unit for development I guess you'd call it. Um, the paper would obviously be attached to this platen here by electrostatic charge and exposed to the light coming through the lenses down there. Um, it's got a basic corona grid as you'd call it or a traction charge grid. grid. And this whole plate here is made out of cast aluminum or extruded aluminum. Uh, sort of similar to a normal photocopier where it does use a high tension electrostatic charge to stick the paper to things but it doesn't use it to transfer any toner. There is no toner. The paper itself is actually like a photograph. This thing's so old and mouldy like that rubber roll is just melting away. It doesn't really want to turn but it sort of turns now, but they're yeah, sort of a cloth rubber composite belt, conveyor belt if you'll call it that. But we'll peel this thing apart and have a quick look at it. There's a big magnetic clutch in there. Might be a motor as well, there's a lot of wires going in so I'm guessing there's a motor in there too. Yeah. I found a transformer floating around near the machine so I'm guessing it came out of this. It was the Corona transformer, about 7000 volts at 3 milliamps. I'll see if I can find where I put it. Okay, this is the transformer that I found in the pile of shit that came with the machine. But I don't actually think it came out of this one. I've got a feeling it's down under this cover where these four bolts are. I think it's bolted in there because these wires are still attached to something and they go up through here and across so I don't think this one came out of it, it probably came out of a machine of the same kind but it's not from this one and this is a YEC one DC power supply model 191T 100 volts input 7.3 kV 2.4 milliamp output and it has alternating or direct current and it's used to attract and repel paper inside the machine so it's probably from a proper photocopier that used toner and it was made in December of 1972 so it's fairly old made in Tokyo Japan so I'll have to dig up my old 110 volt step down transformer or even just put it straight across the variac with the voltage meter and just feed it at 100 volts constant and we'll see what it does it's a fairly chunky little transformer for 3.2, or what was it, 2.4 milliamps. Uh, 
probably abuse the hell out of it and it won't hurt it. Not like the modern Transformers today. Right, let's crack into this panel here. Let's pull this thing apart, see what's inside it, see if there's anything really useful. And then I'll get on to moving this optical assembly out of the main chassis. So that's next. Now it's no wonder this side feed unit's so heavy. It's got a centrifugal blower in it, which is pulling a vacuum on this side of the thing to keep the paper on as well. It's also got corona charge to help it along the way. And it's got a uh, nice geared down induction motor. A little baby oil capacitor on it too. So definitely keeping those. We'll keep the blower, the motor. These shafts are solid steel. They're about almost 20 millimeters in diameter, so it's good stuff to turn down on the lathe. If I have to make up shafts and things like that. That one's got little collars grub screwed onto it. So yeah, photocopiers, particularly the old ones, are a great source of materials for hobbyists. Because we've got 10 millimeter rod, We've got real heavy stuff here, which is almost 20 millimeters. It's probably 19 millimeters. Um, yeah, it's just heavy stuff. You get rods like this, which are coated in acetyl or rubber or whatever. You get good gear motors. That's a 100 volt by Matsushita Electric. That one there is 100 volt. 50, 60 hertz, 4 microfarad capacitor by Kokuzen Denki Company Limited, Japan. So let's strip this thing down and uh, figure out what's going on inside. I'll try and salvage whatever I can. There's also little solenoids and things in here too. The only drama with a lot of machines like this is things are 100, 100 or 120 volt but you can get away using the Variac like that one or just a simple 120 volt step down transformer that is if your main supply is say 240 or 220 or whatever you, you can step down using transformers or Variacs I'm gradually getting through it I can tell you it's not as quick as stripping down a modern photocopier got two good blower fans yeah, system perhaps uh, 100, 110 volts so I'll probably run them in series and they'll work all right off 240 the mirror is very eaten by crap and corrosion so that's rubbish lens assembly is kind of neat I'll probably keep that one that goes between 1.0 exposure which is the big lens and 0.7 which is a smaller one Pretty neat. <laughs> Very expensive optics. Um, Minolta was making cameras long before then. That one's loose. But yeah, Cap Minolta has always been renowned for high quality cameras and photo optical equipment. Hence why they went into photocopiers and printers. All right, we've got the optics box out in one piece. And there's that big transformer I was talking about before. 100 volts input, 8.75 kilowatts output. Sorry, kilovolts output. Two milliamps. Pretty neat. Definitely keeping that one. And that's a little developer unit down there. So, we have optical assembly. Nasty old mirror, uh, various old barrier strips and things. There's not a lot on this. Some old cube relays, and the uh, exposure point, which should switch over. Yep. I'll probably just unbolt this whole optical assembly. There's four main bolts holding into the housing and four holding the surround on it. So I'll just strip it down and keep the optics. I'll keep the cube relays. I might even keep the whole board. 
take this little PCB off. It's just mounted on a little backing plate. Barrier strips are pretty old school, but might even pull them out too. Yeah, not, not so concerned about the contactor. Fuse bank I'll keep. Big wire wound potentiometer I'll keep, that's for sure. They're a bit hard to find. So yeah, we'll strip this thing down and get rid of it. And then we'll move on to the developer unit and the developer tank. Okay, well that's the optical assembly out. Got the backing plate and everything. I even found a little ball for the ball detent which goes from one side to the other. Got some really neat gear. Make a nice wall ornament. <laughs> Mounted on some kind of we weapon. There. <laughs> Hard to focus through that one. <laughs> 